was 1945. The war was over. Slowly, painfully, life came back to the ruins of Europe. The war was over, but there was no peace. Despair crouched over the continent. Hopelessness circled Europe like a bird of prey. Why? What were the forces? What were the issues in a war that turned nations into rubble heaps and populations into beggars? The people wanted the answers. They wanted to know what happened and why. In the Palace of Justice in Nuremberg, the people of the world came together. For there sat the International Military Tribunal to judge the chief Nazi war criminals. Have bathed the world in blood. And set civilization back a century. They have subjected their European neighbors to every spoliation and deprivation. They have brought the German people to the lowest ebb of wretchedness. They have stirred hatred and incited domestic violence on every continent. Will you please explain exactly what took place at this conference in the Führer's train? First of all, Canaris had a short talk with von Ribbentrop, particularly as regards the Polish region. Secondly, Canaris spoke vehemently against the measures that he, Canaris, had found out about, to wit, the projected shooting and extermination measures that were being directed against the Polish intelligentsia, nobility and clergy, as well as all elements that could be regarded as embodiment of the national resistance movement. at the time, more or less verbatim, that the world will at some time make the armed forces under whose eyes these events have occurred also responsible for these events. Defendant Frank, Nazi governor of Poland, was another of the conspirators guilty of directing mass murder. In his diary, he speaks of taking advantage of the focus of attention on the Western Front by carrying out wholesale liquidation of thousands of Poles. These atrocities were not restricted to the East. Here is the proof in the village of Oradour-sur-Glane, France. San Calisto Caves, Italy, where 350 hostages were carefully listed. And 
and systematically murdered. And here is Lidice in Czechoslovakia. In blind retaliation for the assassination of SS man Heydrich, the Nazis murdered all Lidice's men and sent their women and children into slavery in Germany. But this was not enough. Boys of the Arbeitsdienst were moved into the ruins of Lidice and ordered to level the village to the ground. the Nazi's example to all occupied people. But more terrible still were the concentration camps, which from the beginning had been the conspirators' chief weapon against opposition of every kind. German anti-Nazis were the first victims, but with the war their numbers swelled to include citizens of all the nations of Europe. Their fate is described by witness Rudolf Hess. I commanded Auschwitz until the 1st of December 1943 and estimate that at least two and a half million victims were executed and exterminated there by gassing and burning. At least another half million succumbed to starvation and disease, making a total dead of about three million. Included among the executed and burned were approximately 20,000 Russian prisoners of war who were delivered at Auschwitz in Wehrmacht transport. The remainder of the total number included about 100,000 German Jews and great numbers of citizens from Holland, France, Belgium, Poland, Hungary, Czechoslovakia, Greece and other countries. Medical experiments, too, were standard procedure at many concentration camps. These included lowering the body temperature to 28 degrees centigrade, high altitude tests in pressure chambers, experiments with poison bullets and contagious diseases, and even sterilization experiments. This was genocide, the premeditated destruction of entire people. Genocide, the direct result of the Nazis' claim that they had the right to destroy the party's opposition. Tomorrow the world, dead or alive. The slave labor policy was the responsibility of defendant Salko, who admitted in 1944, out of the five million workers who arrived in Germany, not even 200,000 came voluntarily. Forced labor often meant brutal and degrading treatment, for Sokol himself suggested. All the men must be fed, sheltered, and treated in such a way as to exploit them to the highest possible extent at the lowest possible expenditure. And defendant Bormann added, the Slavs are to work for us. In so far as we do not need them, they may die. Slavery was only one aspect of Nazi exploitation. Defendant Goering, in a talk with German occupation authorities in 1942, discussed another, plunder. God knows you are not sent out to work for the welfare of the people in your charge, but to get the utmost out of them so that the German people can live. This everlasting concern about foreign people must cease now, once and forever. I have here before me reports on what you are expected to deliver. It makes no difference to me in this case if you say that your people will starve. But Nazi crimes against humanity were not limited to foreign peoples. Defendant Frick, as Minister of Interior, directed a program aimed at aged, 
insane or incurable Germans, the so-called useless eaters. Thousands were committed to special institutions. Few ever returned. Evidence proved they were murdered because they were useless to the plans of the Nazi conspiracy. But perhaps the greatest crime against humanity the Nazis committed against the Jews. A campaign of hate and murder that goes to the heart of the Nazi movement. Related blood willing to serve the German Reich and people. Marriages between Jews and citizens of German or related blood are prohibited. Brigadier General Stroop, in charge of the Warsaw Ghetto in 1943, had learned his Nazi lessons well. In a secret report, he said, The Reichsführer SS ordered on the 23rd of April, 1943, the cleaning out of the ghetto with utter ruthlessness. I therefore decided to destroy and burn down the entire ghetto. Jews frequently left their hideouts, but occasionally remained in the burning buildings and jumped out of the windows only when the heat became unbearable. Life in the sewers was not pleasant after the first week. Tear gas bombs were thrown into the manholes and the Jews were driven out and captured. Countless numbers of Jews were liquidated in sewers and bunkers through blasting. The longer the resistance continued, the tougher became the members of the Waffen-SS, police and Wehrmacht, who always discharged their duties in an exemplary manner. Little by little, the Nazis were reaching what they called the final solution, the total extermination of the Jews of Europe. Hess described the process well. We had two SS doctors on duty at Auschwitz to examine the incoming transports of prisoners. The prisoners would be marched past one of the doctors who would make spot decisions as they walked by. Those who were fit for work were sent into the camp, others were sent immediately to the extermination plant. Children of tender years were invariably exterminated since by reasons of their youth they were unable to work. We endeavored to fool them into thinking they were to go through a delousing process. It took from 3 to 15 minutes to kill the people in the death chamber, depending upon climatic conditions. We knew when the people were dead, because their screaming stopped. We usually waited about one half hour before we opened the doors and removed the bodies. After the bodies were removed, our special commanders took off the rings and extracted the gold from the teeth of the corpses. Much of this loot was then transferred to secret vaults of the Reichsbank at Frankfurt am Main, the Reichsbank of Defendant Funk. Labor Chief Robert Ly knew that six million Jews died in the Nazis' final solution. In his will, he said, 
In anti-Semitism, we violated the basic commandment of God's creation. It is hard to admit mistakes, but the whole existence of our people is in question. We must have the courage to rid ourselves of anti-Semitism. God has taught me that in my cell in Nuremberg. And Defendant Frank himself said before this court, We have fought against Jewry, and we have allowed ourselves to make utterances which are terrible. A thousand years will pass, and this guilt of Germany will still not be erased. The prosecution rests. delivered by Lord Justice Lawrence, President of the Tribunal. Of the organizations, the SS, SD, Gestapo, and Leadership Corps are found guilty. The High Command, SA, and Reich Cabinet, not guilty. As for the individual, Wilhelm Hermann Goering, guilty of conspiracy, crimes against peace, war crimes, and crimes against humanity, death by hanging. Rudolf Hess, guilty of conspiracy and crimes against peace, life imprisonment. Joachim von Ribbentrop, guilty of conspiracy, crimes against peace, war crimes, and crimes against humanity, death by hanging. Wilhelm Heitel, guilty of conspiracy, crimes against peace, war crimes, and crimes against humanity, death by hanging. Ernst Kaltenbrunner, guilty of war crimes and crimes against humanity, death by hanging. Alfred Rosenberg, guilty of conspiracy, crimes against peace, War crimes and crimes against humanity. Death by hanging. Hans Frank. Guilty of war crimes and crimes against humanity. Death by hanging. Wilhelm Frick. Guilty of crimes against peace, war crimes, and crimes against humanity. Death by hanging. Julius Streicher. Guilty of crimes against humanity. Death by hanging. Walter Funk. Guilty of crimes against peace, war crimes, and crimes against humanity. Life imprisonment. Hjalmar Schacht. Not guilty on this indictment. Release. Karl Dernis. Guilty of crimes against peace and war crimes. Ten years imprisonment. Eric Rader, guilty of conspiracy, crimes against peace, and war crimes. Life imprisonment. Baldur von Schira, guilty of crimes against humanity. Twenty years imprisonment. Fritz Sauckel, guilty of war crimes and crimes against humanity. Death by hanging. Alfred Jodl, guilty of conspiracy, crimes against peace, war crimes, and crimes against humanity. Death by hanging. Franz von Papen, not guilty on this indictment. Release. Albert Speer, guilty of war crimes and crimes against humanity. 20 years imprisonment. Constantine von Neurath, guilty of conspiracy, 
crimes against peace, war crimes, and crimes against humanity. 15 years imprisonment. Arthur Spice Inquart, guilty of crimes against peace, war crimes, and crimes against humanity. Death by hanging. Hans Spritzer, not guilty on this indictment. Release. Martin Bormann, tried in absentia. Guilty of war crimes and crimes against humanity. Death by hanging. The trial is over. begin their prison sentences. Goering chooses to die by his own hand. The other ten wait for the gallows. and why. But Nuremberg is more than an answer to a question. As Justice Jackson said, this trial is part of the great effort to make the peace more secure. It constitutes juridical action of a kind to ensure that those who start a war will pay for it personally. Nuremberg stands as a warning to all those who plan and wage a good war.